everyone. Today I'm gonna to teach you about how to warm up before your workout and why you should do that. The weather is definitely getting colder where I am. I'm putting sweatshirts on before I go out to my workout here in the garage gym that is not heated. Uh, and it makes me think about warming up even more. Now, you should warm up always, even if it's the hottest day of the year or if it's the coldest day of the year, or if you're inside in a climate controlled environment, you still want to warm up. But with the turn in weather, I always think about my warm up even more. And I think I just value it even more because I feel the effects of it tremendously when I'm starting from a cold place. So stick around in this video. We're gonna start with talking about why you should warm up. Then I'm gonna show you the warm up that I'm doing right now and why I like it and why you can do it. And then make sure you stay to the end of the video because I'm gonna talk about a couple of things you don't want to do for your warm-up. There actually are some things that you want to avoid as part of the warm-up process. So let's dive in. So the number one reason why you should warm up is that it warms you up. <laughs> Seems obvious, right? So we get our blood flowing, we get our circulation moving, we increase our body temperature when we start moving in a more general light fashion. That slight increase to our heart rate, that slight increase to how the blood volume is pumping through our body, that helps to raise our body temperature and in turn we start to be more ready for the more marked increase in body temperature and circulation that we're going to need when we exercise more strenuously. Now the number two reason why you want to do a warm up is to get your nervous system ready. Our nervous system is our brain, our spinal cord, and our nerves, which go out to every part of our body and they tell our body what's going on and we use our nervous system to do all of the things we wanna do with our body. Your nervous system is always operating, it's always paying attention and responding, but what a warm up can do is actually get your nervous system to pay more attention to certain things than others. So areas you're going to be moving more, um, pressure points you might be doing if you do some foam rolling, uh, those are things that bring more attention to that area of your body and they can help your nervous system make your muscles work better. And so getting our nervous system connected on kind of online and ready for what you're about to do is great. Now, the number three reason why you want to get your workout in is because it gets you psychologically ready. I think we can all agree that there are occasions where you're like, yes, I feel ready. I am mentally ready for this. I am focused on what I'm about to do and then you go to your workout. But most of the time, that's not the case. Most of the time we're rushing from work to get to our workout in time, or rushing from something we had to do with the kids to get to our workout in time, or squeezing the workout in, in between something else that we're doing like work or appointments, or it's like 5 a.m. and you just rolled out of bed and you're like, I don't even, I don't even know what day it is. I just know I'm supposed to be in my workout right now. All of those are challenging mental situations and your brain may be thinking about other things. You may be emotionally and mentally connected elsewhere and that is not ideal when you're getting ready to go do your workout. I mean, you're showing up for the workout, so like, let's get the most out of the workout, right? And so being psychologically ready for it is great because it brings your attention to what you're about to do. It gets you thinking in the mindset of what your focus should be. Things like what exercises you're going to do, what technique you need to review from your whatever your co notes your coach gave you or the YouTube videos you watched to learn something last night. Uh, you wanna make sure you have all of that top of mind. And so doing light general movement really can help your brain to start to get into that kind of ready position to do the activity. So let's recap those three so far. We get our cardiovascular system starting to activate a little bit more. We get pump, blood pumping more, our heart rate increases more, that increases body temperature. We also get our nervous system starting to pay more attention to the areas that we want to tend to during our workout. And we start to get psychologically ready, emotionally, cognitively, and with our focus, um, so that we're ready to do the moves that we wanna do in our workout and really give it our all. There's another reason why you wanna do a warm up before you work out. It's also a great way to check in. And people overlook this all the time. It's a great way to check in with your body and notice what's different. So when I teach you these moves I'm about to teach you, You'll do them and over time you'll notice like, oh, my hamstrings feel tighter today or huh, my back feels better today or wow, I can reach farther than I did before. Um, and those are all really great little self checks that'll help you keep track of if there's something you might need to pay more attention to because you're like, oh, my hamstrings have been tighter for a while now. Maybe I should 
figure that out and spend some extra time outside of my workout investigating that, talking to a coach or something like and that. And finally, the last reason to do a warm up is because there's research that shows it reduces your risk of injuries during the workout. And nobody really likes to get injured, so do your warm up. All right, now that I've gone over the reasons to do your warm up, I'm going to teach you some moves that I'm doing right now, the exact sequence of warm up that I'm doing. And then remember, stick around to the end because there are a few things you don't want to do as part of your warm up because they're not so great. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, the first move I do for a warm up is a jump ropeless jump, which is just pretending like you're using a jump rope uh, and just jumping in place. Now, I will say, if you're not used to any sort of jumping, uh, your lower legs might feel pretty sore from that after you first start because it's a lot of repetitions in a row um, on a muscle that you may not have trained to do that yet. So, if you're new to jumping, maybe start with just 10 to 20 of what I'm going to show you and then conclude the rest of this part of the warm up with marching in place uh, or doing, if you have a step there, going up and down on a step. Um, in repetitive motion to complete the time for the warm up. This only takes a minute tops and it looks like this. And I just really like this move because it gets me thinking about like if I had a jump rope, how would my hands move while I'm doing that? You certainly could use a jump rope. Usually my guy is using the jump rope and I go ahead and do this because I don't have to worry about messing up the rope as I'm jumping. So I could just keep going. <laughs> And I'll usually do 50 to 100 depending on the day, but it gives me a nice warm sensation in my shoulders. Uh, and then of course it starts to get my legs warmed up and raises my heart rate. After that, then we go into a toe touch and it looks like this. Take your uh, right arm and it'll be your opposite leg, so your left leg. Reach up and try to touch your toe. And then use your left arm and your right leg. Just like that. And if you're feeling a little stiff, like you can't reach, that's okay. Just go with whatever knee straightness that you can. The main goal is to not do this and have your hips tuck under as you do it. You wanna to try to keep yourself nice and tall. And this is where your brain is starting to do that left, right hemisphere connectivity with your body. Anytime we do stuff with one side of our body and the other side of our body, our brains kind of like that a lot and it gets our left and right hemispheres going a bit more. So I'll usually do anywhere from eight to 15 of those on each leg. After I finish those toe touches, then I'm gonna go into a heel kick behind my body and I'll use the same thing. Left arm is gonna go for right toe. So you'll take your arms up, reach one foot back and touch the heel or the toe of the foot. So I'm gonna turn around so you can see what it looks like from the back. And you can start to get your hamstrings going here to the backs of the legs. And of course, with the arms going up and down, starting to get a really nice warm up through my arms. And you might even start to feel some muscle contractions through your back as your body is connecting that left and right side. Once I finish behind the back heel touches, then I'm gonna go to a front of body elbow to knee. So it'll look like if you've done any VHS workout video from the 80s or 90s, you've probably done this. Arms are gonna go up like this. Cross your knee over and touch. And again, you're gonna to try to stand tall the entire time. Try not to let your butt tuck under and allow yourself to rotate from side to side. So notice I'm not just bringing the arm across, but actually adding a bit of torso rotation there. So you'll feel some muscles warming up in your abs. Definitely you'll feel your arms at this point and probably start to feel that heart rate now, getting you into a bit more of that feeling breathy kind of sensation that we're looking for. Then after I finished those moves, so the modified jump rope, the toe touches, the heel touches behind the back, and then the cross body elbow to knee, then I'm gonna go to the wall so that I can do a hip circle. These hip circles are originally coined by functional range conditioning as a controlled articular rotation. What that just means is that you're being very controlled as you try to rotate your hip joint through its entire range of motion. So let's do it over here. We're going to hold onto the wall and then we're going to lift our knee up as high as we can. Then we're going to swing the knee out to the side as far as we can without letting our hips turn. And then we're going to lift the foot up as high as we can. Sweep the leg around behind us, keeping the heel close to the butt until we come back underneath ourselves. Then up and around and back around. And then again.
and just like that. And where with the other activities, I'll do anywhere from eight to 12, those I'll only do three to five. And that's usually plenty. You'll feel your hip really getting nice and warm. You'll feel all these areas of limitation that you're like, oh, good to know. I'll have to pay attention to those in the future. Uh, and you'll really start to feel your hips getting woken up with what you want them to do. Quick, there's just one more move. We're gonna go through our shoulder now and do the exact same thing. So these shoulder circles originally are coined by, again, by functional range conditioning as a shoulder controlled articular rotation. And again, it just means move your arm with control through the greatest range of motion that you can and we're going to have some rotation happening as we do that so the way i like to do it is like this i'll stand i'm going to take my palm and face it forward and i'm going to reach across my body as far as i can i'll feel a stretch in my back as i do that and i'm going to keep the elbow straight and then i'll come up by my ear Notice, I'm gonna start turning my arm now. So it's gonna start turning away like I'm doing the backstroke, like I'm reaching behind me, okay? So here, now, when I get past my ear, I'm gonna start turning my palm away, and I'm gonna be trying to reach my arm back behind my body as I complete my circle until it finishes right behind my body. And then I'll unwrap that arm as I come back around. Here's how it looks from behind, so you can see the back part. And again, I'll do three of those on each side and then we're ready to go. We're ready to work out. All right, that's the warm up. That's how easy it is. It takes five minutes tops to get your body warm and ready to go. Could you take longer if you were feeling extra cold? Most certainly. Or if you felt like you just needed a few more areas of attention that you wanna add in to what I just taught you, feel free to add those in. But a warm up really can be that simple and be that effective. Now, I told you at the start of this video that you should stick around to the end because there are a few things you don't wanna do before your workout as a warm up. And here they are. Number one, you do not wanna do static stretching before you start your workout. Static stretching is when you do something like this, or you fold over and reach for the toes. Anything where you're stretching and holding that position is called a static stretch. We actually have the research to show us now that static stretching can actually increase your injury risk. And so we want to avoid any sort of static stretching and save that more for after your workout when you're just relaxing and resting and recovering. Now there's another thing you don't want to do before you work out and that's spend your entire warm up time laying on a foam roller. Foam rollers aren't bad, but they've certainly been over promised with what they can do. They make you feel good, generally speaking, if you like massage, um, and they are relaxing if you like that sort of thing, uh, but they've been overstated with what their effects are with regards to breaking up uh, adhesions or loosening muscles or any of those things. They're not doing that. They are bringing your nervous system's attention to that area, which might help you feel better, right? Um, but they aren't helping you get ready for the workout you're about to do. So if you're gonna use a foam roller before you work out, leave it to just a minute or two and then get onto the rest of your warm up and save the foam rolling for a relaxation restorative day, maybe later in the evening or on the weekend when you're not doing a strenuous workout. Again, they're not bad, but they've been overstated on what they can do. And you really wanna just leave that to the bare minimum if you're gonna even do it at all before your workout. You definitely don't have to. Now, finally, there's one more thing you don't wanna do as a warm up, and that's anything that is too strenuous or complex. That might be obvious to you by this point that the point of a warm up is to build ourselves up and to ramp up to what we're about to do. Um, and so doing things that are general, that are generally considered light, um, and that are not too mentally challenging in terms of technique and skill and all of that. Um, that's probably obvious to you by now that you've watched this video. However, I frequently, as a coach in a gym or out in a park or anywhere I'm doing a workout, will see people doing a warm up that to me looks like the workout. And so I just want to encourage you to keep your warm ups light, keep them general, and don't make them too complex or too hard. That's what your workout is for. So you wanna use that mental and physical energy for the workout itself. There's one of those old sayings like, your workout is our warm up," or something like that. I don't know. I really dislike all that stuff that's like, we're so tough, we do everything really hard. There's time and place to do hard things, obviously. Your warm up is not the time or place to do those hard things. So just make sure your warm up, if you're going to um, create your own warm up, which you certainly could, uh, not too complex, 
not too difficult technically, not too strenuous. It should be fun. It should be general and it should be stuff that moves you in ways you probably didn't move all day during your work day or whatever you were up to earlier before you started your workout. Okay, I hope this video helps. If it does, be sure to leave a comment below and let me know. Or if you have a question, you can post that as well. Uh, share this with a friend if you think they need to know about how to do a warm-up. And be sure to do the like and subscribe thing so that you can be updated about when I have a new video here on YouTube. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon and be sure you get your warm-up in.